Hello, everyone. Um, this is Jennifer, and these are my parents. Say hi, guys. Hi, hi. Hi, guys. Um, so first off, um, this video is kind of going to talk about adoption, um, a little bit on my story, um, and then just adoption in general. I know you guys had a lot of questions. Um, I just want to say first, um, thank you to you guys, my parents, for doing this. I know it can be a little maybe nerve wracking, uncomfortable, just the subject in general. So thank you. Also, thank you to everyone that submitted questions. I really appreciate it. Um, and then also three, just if you hear anything, I live in New York City. And so it's a little noisy and I live in the first floor. Now, um, let's get to it. So I'm kind of going to go in order of the questions, kind of the way the process is. Um, so the first one that I got, guys, was tell us about your parents' decision to adopt. So kind of following that, you know, how did you hear about adoption? How did you get the info about adoption? And then what was the, you know, your kind of your final decision to do it? Um, your brothers, Patrick and Christopher, were, um, let's see, you're, 20, you're 29 and they're 38. So Patrick is about 10 years old and Chris was about eight years old. And we saw that they're going to be in four or five years. They're they were going to be growing up and leaving, and we kind of didn't like that. So then we had a friend that I worked with, um, a single mom who uh, went to Peru and adopted a girl, and she told us uh, about these twins that were down there, and one thing led to another, and this kind of fell into place. So here we are, 29 years later. Pretty much when that happened, when you kind of decided, you know what, maybe we'll adopt from um, Peru, international adoption. Um, were we, Andrew and I, my twin brother, if you guys don't know, we both were adopted. Um, were, did you see a picture of us? Did you hear like the story about us, our birth parents? You know, how did you get any info on us? We had no information on you. Yeah, we didn't have any. You gotta pictures, remember right? that was before uh, instant, uh, instant information so you know it's 29 years ago um didn't have cell phones uh we didn't know anything we knew absolutely nothing about you so there, you there was a boy her. and a girl okay and you were born on november 1st and uh, that was about the extent we knew nothing about the parents although we knew um we knew one was uh peruvian and one was inca and um, it, um People were ha they were having troubles because they couldn't find people to take care of two kids because of the financial burden. So you've been passed around a lot, but no, we had virtually no information, virtually none. Okay. No, so pic no pictures at all. Just that we just kind of what you just told us. Yeah. This, it was this, very random. Yeah. So this kind of answers the question. The next one was, did your parents know they wanted two children when they adopted you and your brother, or is that kind of just what happened? Well, we thought twins would be fun. Actually, you were my first girl, so when yeah. I heard it was a girl and a boy, I was excited. So if you don't know, I have two older brothers, like we, which we've already touched on. They were also adopted um, in uh, Illinois, um, and Christopher and Patrick, um, obviously boys. So my mom, you said you wanted a girl, right? Yeah, you and Andrew. And then, yeah, it kind of happened that way. So that answers that question. And then... Um, so what is kind of the process to even start adoption? Like, I guess if you want to go legally or do you guys have to like, have to be people that come to your home and check that out? What's, you know? Not, not at that time. Um, we just went to Peru and um, we started the, you know, we had, we had to stay there for a week and then um, we did all the legal work and then we came home for three weeks and then we came back after the legal work was already processed. Got so it. we, we had you that first week, the first day we, we saw you and we different had countries have much different, um, the United States was much more involved. This was a private adoption as opposed to an adoption through a, an agency in the state. So, um, it was fairly straightforward, uh, not fairly terribly easy. difficult. As it turned out for us, it was not terribly difficult, but sometimes those uh, things just run into all kinds of red tape. And, mm -hmm. you know, we had, um, we stayed at some kind of modest hotel when we were there that had three other people that were kind of doing the same thing. And a couple of them had run into all kinds of heartache. Had been there two months and just waiting for the government to 
straightened up its act. So we were fortunate. Ours went pretty smoothly. Others, not so much. It's kind of, I guess, the luck of the draw. Yeah, you hear those horror stories that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's good that it was fairly easy. Um, and then, mom, so you went to pick up Andrew and I with your mom, my grandma, Grandma Anderlich. Yeah. Tell me a, just a little bit about that process and what happened. I know it was kind of a turmoil in Peru a little bit at the Well, at the that time. point, um, yes, it was. It was, um, it was, um, they were doing a lot of police, uh, there was bombings and, you know, all kinds of things. So there was police spot on every street. And um, when they saw us, um, and at that, at that point, they were doing a lot of blackmailing too. They wanted money for us to go on and um, we didn't give them any. So, I mean, we got through it, but it was, it was difficult because we had to stay in the hotel and um, we had to just make sure that we got to the embassy on time. And we hired a, um, um, we hired a, a policeman to get us through the airport all the you know either that or they would want money and and um so we did that we hired a policeman and we got you through and you know got you on the plane there was a, a, a terrorist organization um that was pretty active in peru you know back in this was the early 90s i can't i can't think of the name of them now can you but i was trying to think it was they were causing some problems and also cholera was a major issue. We had cholera shots before we went. And in fact, uh, Andrew and Patrick were supposed to go with us. Or Chris and Pat. Excuse me, Chris and Pat were supposed to go with us. Yeah. And um, one of them couldn't get the cholera shot because they'd been sick or something. So we ended up not taking them, which would turn out to be a, a pretty a good decision. Peru was um, a third world country day, and it was really a third world country then. I mean. It was just, uh, it was, it was rough. So I want to say it's a shining, shining something. Shining, is it shining path? Shining yeah, path I think or something shining like that. Path. I think I remember you telling me that you had to bribe with candy bars. Is that something you guys? Well, that happened at the embassy. Yeah. Um, because by the time that um, Peru goes by a different time zone, like when they say they're going to show up at, at 10, you might see them around two o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. And um, so the embassy closes, I, I think, at 12 at noon to be able to process the visas. And then you have to come back and get the visas. Then you're allowed to, to leave. Mm -hmm. Well, our attorney showed up uh, like at 12 and the embassy closed at 12. So by the time we got over there, we were late and I gave the embassy. I, I brought candy bars with me and we were able to get in and get your visas. And um, because we didn't want to stay any longer because of all the turmoil that was turmoil that was going on. So we did it through candy bars. <laughs> and you, again, it was you and my grandma Anderlich that got us. And how were we, what, tell me a little a story about the potato truck. Well, the potato truck, um, we were told this to be, uh, we don't, maybe it was folklore, but maybe it's true. Uh, you were, you grew up in the mountains mm -hmm. and uh, they said when, and we picked you up in um, Miraflores, which is a kind of a suburb of Lima. And they said, when you came out of the mountains, you came down on the back of a pickup truck. Wow. Uh, you and Andrew did. Uh, that's what we were told, uh, true or not, uh, one never knows. But uh, that To was hide us, right? To hide us from a potato, a potato truck. They said since, so you wouldn't, they wouldn't be, you wouldn't be ambushed along the way. A potato truck is a, basically a wagon pulled by a horse and that brings potatoes out of the mountains. And they, we were hidden because they didn't want Peruvian children to be adopted. Is that what, or what? Well, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, um, there was a lot of that going on, but there was a lot of that going on in a lot of countries, but yes. Gotcha. At least that's what we were told. We just, we just know where you were born was um, kind of, um, unrest and uh, might have been the terrorist community i don't, we were told it was but who knows but um just to get you down safe that's how they got you we kept a low profile when we were there for that reason of course yeah of course of course and then you finally got us we came on a plane right straight to was it 
Where were you? Uh, Lima to uh, Lima to, uh, to Chicago. Miami. To my, my, wow. Lima, Miami, Sh Miami, Chicago. Grandma was supposed to come back to Decatur, Illinois with us. And she gets into Chicago and she lo just looked at your dad and said, can I go home, please? <laughs> You had had enough. <laughs> it was like, wasn't it like 90 degrees? It was hot. Well, it would have been our spring, so their fall. Yeah, and we had a... Uh, it was pretty well on the, uh, pretty close to the equator. Yeah, so it's a little pretty south. Accurate. And uh, when you got us, too, you also, we um, were in baskets, right? And we had... Yeah, we had, still have those time. pictures. Yeah, you were in yeah, baskets. Yeah, I'll show yeah. those. With, the wool, with the wool blanket, wool... <laughs> And it was, it was really hot. 